Hey guys, today I want to give you an introduction to Simpson's rule, which is a numerical method, and we use it to approximate the area under a curve or the definite integral of a function. Let's say that we're trying to find the definite integral of f of x between a and b. So the first thing we do when we're using Simpson's rule is we divide that area into n strips and the width of each strip is the same. So let's call that width h. Now the whole idea of Simpson's rule is to approximate the area of two consecutive strips to the area below a quadratic that passes through the three endpoints of both strips. And then for the next two strips we do the same thing with a new quadratic that passes through the next three endpoints. And then we do it once more for the last two sections. And because we've connected the points using a quadratic curve as opposed to straight lines for example when we use the trapezium rule, then we actually end up with a more accurate approximation to the definite integral of f of x. And one last thing that I wanted to mention before we take a look at an example is that we need three distinct points in order to uniquely define a quadratic. And so because we need three distinct points, that means each quadratic is going to approximate the area of two strips. And so because we need two strips for every quadratic, that means that the number of strips that we're approximating has to be even. And so we can't use Simpson's rule when we have an odd number of strips. So now that you've had a brief introduction to Simpson's rule from a graphical perspective, let's now take a look at the formula. So here we have the formula for Simpson's rule. H is the width of each strip or the width of each interval. And the Y terms that you see here, um, they represent the Y coordinates of the endpoints of each strip. And in terms of the formula itself, the patterns that we notice are that the first and last y term have a coefficient of 1. All the odd y terms, y1, y3, all the way up to yn minus 1, they have, and remember n has to be an even number, um, all of these odd y terms have a coefficient of 4, and all of the even y terms, y2, y4, all the way up to yn minus 2, have a coefficient of 2. So with that being said, let's take a look at our first example. So here we're using Simpson's rule with four intervals or four strips to approximate the definite integral of e to the sine x from 0 to 8. So the first thing we want to do is we want to calculate um, the width of each interval, which is h. So since we're integrating from 0 to 8 with four intervals, then the width h of each interval is going to be 8 minus 0 over 4. So h is going to equal 2. So now that we have a value of h, let's now work out the y terms in this formula. So y0 is given by the function evaluated at the lower bound, which is 0. So uh, the function evaluated at 0 is going to be e to the sine 0. And then y1 is going to be the function evaluated at 0 plus h. So 0 plus 2, so we're going to evaluate the function at 2, e to the sine 2. y2 is going to be the function evaluated at 0 plus 2h, so 0 plus 4 is 4, so y2 um, is the function evaluated at 4. And so we have quite a clear pattern here, y3 is going to be e to the sine 6 and then y4 is going to be the function evaluated at the upper bound which is 8. So we get e to the sine 8. So now that we have all the y terms and the value of h we can plug it in and we'll get our approximation. So the definite integral from 0 to 8 of e to the sine x dx is approximately equal to h over 3, so 2 over 3, multiplied by um, y0, so e to the sine 0, plus 4 lots of y1, so 4 lots of e to the sine 2, plus 2 lots of y2, 
So two lots of e to the sine 4 plus four lots of e to the sine 6. And finally, the last y term plus e coefficient 1 plus e to the sine 8. And when you plug that in your calculator, that should give you a value of 11.7 to 3 sig fig. So here we have a second integral. We've got the definite integral from 2 to 8 of x cosine x plus 5 dx. And we're going to be approximating this integral using Simpson's rule with six intervals. So just like last time, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to work out the value of h. And since we're integrating from 2 to 8 and we've got six intervals, then the width of each interval or the width of each strip is going to be 8 minus 2 over 6, which is just going to be 1. So now we have our value of h. Let's work out the values of y. So remember y0 is the value of our function evaluated at the lower bound. So our function evaluated at x equals 2 is going to give us 2 cosine 2 plus 5. And then y1 is going to be our function evaluated at the lower bound 2 plus h. So 2 plus 1 is 3. So evaluating our function at 3 is going to give us 3 cosine 3 plus 5 y2 is going to be the function evaluated at 2 plus 2h, so 2 plus 2 is 4. And hopefully you see the pattern here, so we've got y3 is going to be 5 cosine 5 plus 5, y4 is going to be 6 cosine 6 plus 5, y5 is going to be 7 cosine 7 plus 5 and then we can stop when we get um, the upper bound as the value of x. So y6 is going to be 8 cosine 8 plus 5 and then we can stop here. So now we have our value of h and we have all the values of y so we can plug them in the formula and we'll get our approximation for x cosine x plus 5. So let's have a go at that now. So the integral from 2 to 8 of x cosine x plus 5 dx is approximately equal to h over 3, so 1 over 3 multiplied by y naught, so 2 cosine 2 plus 5 plus 4 lots of y1, so plus 4 times 3 cosine 3 plus 5 plus two lots of y2, so two lots of four cosine four plus five, plus four lots of five cosine five plus five, plus two times six cosine six plus five, plus four lots of seven cosine seven plus five, and then the last y term plus one of yn so one lot of y6 is going to be 8 cosine 8 plus 5. And when you plug that in your calculator, that should give you a value of roughly 36.4 to 3 sig fig. Let's have a go at one last example. Here we're going to be using Simpson's rule um, with four intervals to approximate the definite integral of ln x over x squared um, from 1 to 3. So again the first thing we want to do is we want to calculate the value of h. So if we're integrating from 1 to 3 and we're going to be using four intervals then the width of each interval or the width of each strip is going to be 3 minus 1 over 4 which is 2 over 4 so h is going to be a half. Now that we have h we can work out the values of y so y0 is the value of the function evaluated at the lower bound. So ln1 over 1 squared. We know ln1 is 0. Let's move on to y1. y1 is going to be the value of the function at 
evaluated at 1 plus h, so 1 plus a half, 1.5, so ln 1.5 over 1.5 squared. y2 is going to be the function evaluated at 1.5 plus another half, so we're going to have ln 2 over 2 squared. y3 is going to be another 0.5, we're going to have ln 2.5 over 2.5 squared and finally we've reached the upper bound y4 is going to be ln 3 over 3 squared. So now we have our values of y and we have the value of h so we're ready to approximate this definite integral. So the definite integral from 1 to 3 of ln x over x squared dx is approximately equal to h over 3 so a half over 3 multiplied by this sum, so y0 is, well it's ln 1 over 1, that's just 0, plus 4 lots of y1, so plus 4 times ln 1.5 over 1.5 squared, plus 2 lots of y2, so plus 2 times ln 2 over 4, plus 4 lots of um, y3, so 4 times ln 2.5 over 2.5 squared plus the last y term ln 3 over 9. And when you plug that in your calculator it should give you a value of 0.296236 sig fig. Hey guys, thanks for sticking around. If you want to learn about more methods from numerical analysis then check out this playlist on the screen, there are a bunch of videos on different numerical methods, check it out and I'll see you next time.